start with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Teresa, we take the roll call. Okay, Brenneman. Here. Kill. Here. O'Hara. Here. Randall. Here. Jones. Here. And Monaghan and many are absent with notice. Do I have a motion to approve or any additions to the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the 615 and 628 meetings? Motion to approve minutes from 615 and 628 2021 meetings. Second. Any discussion? Not the vote. Keel? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Randall? Yes. Brenneman? Yep. And I'm a yes. No bills? No bills. Amazing. Uh, any public input uh, on items not on the agenda? Mr. Chris. Yes, sir. Chris Tuesday from Public Radio Brewing. Um, something just to share some thoughts with you all on Jamboree Days. I'll uh, I send a letter to or an email to the uh, Master for this to kind of our thoughts around <clears throat> some of the changes that took place this year. So I'd like to read it if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. So Leah, we'd like to start this letter with an acknowledgement of all the hard work and planning of the Jamboree Committee that puts into the week every year. It's a very nice series of events that provides lots of enjoyment to many people. As business owners and community volunteers, we fully appreciate the commitment it takes to continue putting something like this together. We're writing this letter to express our serious disappointment <clears throat> at the decision to move the street dance away from all the business activity into a residential area. Three and a half years ago, when we were planning our business and considering numerous location options, our downtown location was only one possibility. When we were given the opportunity to be a starting point for a downtown revitalization, we knew it would be a risk as well as a lot of effort. As we weighed the options, after traffic flow was a significant consideration as at that time, downtown was pretty much dead. As an individual, Chris grew up in town, and at, the time, at that time, Jim Green Days was almost entirely downtown steady numbers of people in the central business district all weekend. Knowing that we would have to work pretty hard for our business traffic, having weekends like Danbury and Hometown Christmas from company, in the sense that they would bring more natural traffic flow and realization of what is happening downtown to the broader community. When we moved back to town and realized that all the events with the exception of the street dance and part of the parade ride relocated was quite a disappointment. That first summer, Chris discussed potentially relocating the car shows in the future with a couple different committee members and repeatedly told no, it was the park is a better location. We may inquire about setting up a vendor booth, we're informed that the Jamboree Committee has a monopoly on alcohol sales, and that is the biggest fundraiser the committee has. In addition to operating a business, we are active in community volunteering, especially as it concerns downtown. My wife, Callie, is VP of Downtown Harper Inc. <coughs> group similarly dedicated individuals who work hard to bring events, recognition, and improvements to the downtown area. As you're likely aware, they have commissioned a nearly $15,000 master plan with ISG, a group set up collective feedback at the dump tank. This money was raised through completely private means, leaving the taxpayer money alone. As this group and others in the community continue their efforts, having their progress seen by a larger number of people more often will only serve to accelerate the revitalization efforts. Locating the single business week in a town nearly completely away from the downtown area is a detriment to this effort. There are currently three downtown businesses that have a large majority of the retail sales subject to the third penny tax. The, fund that we understand, the funds that we understand are drawn from to provide the January days budget. In the past, these businesses were at the very least allowed to compete with the business of all the people the event draws. As of this year, they're not even allowed to compete. These businesses are instead expected to compete to even bring traffic, bring this traffic to the central business district, and they're competing with something they have largely funded. For prospective business owners and investors looking to potentially bring something new to downtown, this is likely to be a consideration, at least it was for us. If the revitalization of downtown is going to gain serious momentum, which will absolutely require substantial private investment, everyone in town needs to be on the same team, playing the same game. Businesses such as ours, restaurants, and other retail outlets don't typically look at an area like the current downtown and see these grow to success. 
The Alpha 2 is placing more like Phillips Avenue for its nearly year-round high level of natural traffic. Small town businesses often struggle for these exact same reasons, making all the more important to provide opportunities for substantial incidental traffic whenever possible. This community has struggled to keep businesses afloat for the years. While there are likely a multitude of reasons for this, it does not make investing any more attractive. We ask you to consider, reconsider next year's event locations and bring this event more into line with how other small communities execute their annual festivals on their main streets or in their main street business community. We've never been approached about helping with any sort of fundraising, but we should be pretty clear that it's something we've had quite a lot of success at. We want to plan something that will mutually be, be mutually beneficial to the January Committee as well as our area of town. Maybe a large joint bingo, well advertised, and great grand prize with help with a substantial amount of funds. Please share our concerns with your committee. Sincerely, Chris and Kelly Tish, of the Ridge. Thank you. And you have yes. sent that, or? Yes, I have. It was sent on June 21st. All right. Have you heard anything back from Leah? Just that it was forwarded to the committee. Okay. It's still going to be a trick that doesn't take. Well, our only uh, piece of this is when they come to talk to us about, about funds. So uh, it'd probably be good if you could get a copy of that letter so we at least have it. So could you do that? Yeah. You can scan that or whatever and send it out to us so at least we have it in our, in our archives. That I mean, that's really our only, that's our time when we have discussion with them. No, I realize there may be nothing in the council can do right. but I just wanted to share thoughts. No, that's, no, that's we appreciate uh, it. absolutely. That's we feel, we feel it's critical, so yeah, really important. So no, thank you. Too bad. Are there any questions, or comments, or thank you? Thank no, you. thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> All right, anybody else? If not, we're going to move on to the visitors. Mark Winter. Requesting a legion size baseball field in Hartford. Yes. We were approached that uh, there are people that would like to have a baseball team in Hartford, and right now there is not a field that's a sufficient size. But out at Swenson Park, in the original drawings and even in the updated drawings, there's room out there for a legion size baseball field, which is 90 foot baseball, baseline. And Right now, there's money in the uh, Sports and Rec Fund to cover what it would take to put the fence up out there. So, would like to see if they, you know, if the council would approve that that money be expend, expended for that. Get fences put up, get two baseball fields out there, and they could be set up as multi-purpose so that they'd have a removable mound for the younger ones so they could be closer. But as long as we got the, the max distance, then we can serve up all of the uh, teams that are out there. Right now, there is talk that you know they have a team there in Humboldt. Humboldt is supporting a senior team. Right now, there is nobody supporting a junior team. Unfortunately, they've been left out in the cold. When you say junior team, you're talking like teener age? Is that what's called? Okay, teenagers? a senior team is 19 and 18. Okay. Okay. Anybody who has not turned 19 by 1st of Jan January is eligible to play on a senior team, which would be your seniors not from high school. Okay. They can draw if necessary from the younger people than that, but it would cover like 19, 18, 17 year olds. Now, junior team will be drawing from 18, 17, and 16. So right now, there's nobody that's servicing those 17 and 16 year olds. And, but they need the same size baseball field, 90 foot uh, bases. So, you know, if you got a, a, a field for the junior, it's also gonna work for the senior. And the other thing is, it also depends on the numbers. You now, if there are at least 30 kids that can play on the senior team, the max that they can have on a team is 18. So, even saying you got 30 people, that's enough for two teams of 15 each. Now, and then if you look at junior teams, you do the same thing there. You now, there's room for potentially four teams. Right now, there's only one. 
But if they get two baseball fields put up up there, we can, you know, we're looking at sponsoring at least a junior team. And if there's sufficient numbers, we might be looking at a senior team as well. This is going to be brought up at our next meeting, which is the first week of August. And right now, the board or the committee's recommendation is to sponsor a baseball team. So now we need a field. And being said that the ground and everything is prepared up there, all it needs is to have the fence put up, and then the infield laid out. And from one estimate, it can be done for right on just under the two hundred thousand dollars. So with that two hundred thousand that's in the sports rec fund, that would cover that. And if there is a shortage, we can fundraise and uh, get the rest of it pulled together. Well, your timing is probably pretty good. We're down further in our agenda tonight. We're talking about the uh, creation of our park and rec board that we've just approved here a couple meetings ago. Okay. And this is probably going to be a great first uh, project, if you will, for them to vet and see what they're going to do, talk with the, because there's going to be people from Sports and Rec Committee and other members from town talking about this. I, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but just saying, let's put a fence up and get a ball field going and spend the 200000 these guys got plenty of uses for their 200000 Where's BJ? Is he still here? Yeah. They got plenty of uses for their 200000 I think probably five or six groups could spend that if we let them. So uh, I think we're going to probably have to have more discussion. Anybody else got any? Now, you, as you said, you're forming a new Parks and Recreation Committee. Yes. Have you already picked the members for that? No, we have not. Okay. The Legion would be interested in having one of those positions. All right, we'll take that because tonight we're, that's what, one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. I think it says discuss possible members. Yep, it's on the agenda tonight. Okay. So your timing was great. When I met with Teresa this afternoon to go over the agenda, that's what we discussed. This might be the uh, really great first project. That yeah, I realized according to what the new ordinance said that the budget had to be in by 1 July. Unfortunately, that's passed. Who's watching? The Parks and Rec uh, Committee. We're to 2022, and that's next year. The ordinance is looking forward. So we want to buy oh, July 1st for okay. next year. We haven't had our budget meeting this year. It'll be here in August. Okay, well, so. I'm just looking at what the paperwork says. Yeah. I can't do anything beyond that. Yeah, but going forward, the ordinance we want by July 1st, so we have time to compile the budget. Okay, that's with all the committees. Yeah, that's with all the exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah, what is the it's so Humboldt does not want to support this, is what you're no, saying? No, it's not that Humboldt does not want to support this. Right now, they are the Humboldt Legion is supporting a senior team. Okay, there is nobody supporting a junior team. And the Humboldt Field can't have both a junior and senior team playing on them? If there's too many people playing, they cannot do that. Right now, there is a shortage of ball fields. And I'm not sure that the Humboldt one is regulation size. I got a feeling it might be a little short, which means I'm not sure how the rules extend in that direction. Okay. I'm wondering this as I go. Right. Yeah, so, I don't know. But then, All right. No, we have that opportunity to build a new field. We have the opportunity to get the line out there. It's not going to cost any extra at that point. And you know, if there's a problem with putting the fence up and such, you know, there are other options out there as far as you know who can uh, put up put the locations and everything else. Do you have any other questions? Nope, I don't. Anybody else got any questions? Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put you on the list. <clears throat> All right, um, Vlad. All right. Requesting the ordinance right. change to allow the chickens in the city limits. Right. Yes. I was going to say baseball and brewery. I'm a good company. 
Let's see. All right, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Vlad Scott from 107 Vandemark, uh, one of the old and silver and jamboree route. Uh, I'm representing Hartford citizens in favor for an ordinance to change uh, uh, to allow backyard chickens that is currently not allowed. Uh, so currently the city ordinance classifies chickens or galliforms as the scientific name as livestock and they're prohibited. So speaking to members of our group, which we have about 60 people on our Facebook group, and we have other people that actually, we had meetings that just show up that weren't part of that. Uh, we were kind of discussing about the history of why that is and kind of what happened. And uh, basically a long time ago, or not so long ago, uh, there was no prohibition on having chickens or really any other livestock. And some citizens or members of the community kind of took advantage of that. And so they abuse the privilege, resulting in like loose animals, substandard animal welfare, noise, smell, unkept and unsightly property with no regard for their neighbors. Uh, and we, the residents of Hartford and the members of our group, uh, completely agree with the city council decision to prevent that from happening in the future. Uh, unfortunately, the measure went so far as to prevent responsible hobby farmers like us from keeping clean, quiet, contained, and overall loved and cared for chickens. Uh, so as neighbor municipalities like Brandon, uh, Brookings, and Sioux Falls have uh, successfully adopted proposals like ours, we think that Har Hartford should uh, adopt a reasonable measure to allow up to six hens. That's no roosters, just hens, uh, make much less noise than dogs. So uh, the 60 members of our group, as well as those who have shown us support, uh, would love to grow our community enrichment opportunities through this fun, healthy, and sustainable agricultural connection. Uh, the handouts that I'm sure you've had, I've emailed them. I don't know if everyone's had a chance yeah. to look at them. So they're uh, what we consider the proposal, so we kind of try to do your homework for you in case you don't want to do it. Um, and then also some uh, frequently asked questions that we kind of want to get ahead of before, um, if we were going to discuss those later. Uh, so, and they were created with a lot of community contribution. We talked to other people in the community and an extended community of members in Brandon and Sioux Falls as well. Uh, the, from the Dakota Rural Action and even Food of the Group, uh, they address the most common objections. Uh, but I also hope that this highlights how our extended community has a vested interest in ensuring that backyard chicken people don't get a bad rap. Essentially, so that if we see neighbors that are kind of abusing the, the privilege of having it, then we would uh, kindly talk to them and maybe help them out and say, the chickens are not doing well, then we are a community of experts here to help each other. Because we don't want this to become a burden on the city to have to enforce it, to have to use any resources to have to enforce it. We kind of want to be a self-policing community with this because if somebody uh, takes advantage of it and abuses it, then we all lose a chance to do it responsibly. So, um, so the proposal creates, a, the, what we did right here is we created parameters to ensure that we can trust our neighbors to keep chickens without repeating the conditions that led to their ban. With these limits, problems with noise, smell, predators, and community well-being will be marginalized. As far as the welfare of the chickens, uh, we have uh, in the United States Stephanie Peterson uh, from Fruit of the Coop. She has offered to give free intro to chicken care classes uh, here in Hartford uh, when we request. Uh, obviously, not anything that would prevent her from enjoying the experience, but I'd say if we garner enough uh, support through our channels, whether it be through our Facebook group or just community members hanging out at uh, the brewery discussing things with us. Uh, then we can organize a class and people who like the idea but don't really know what they're doing, they can not only have introduction into how to do it, but they will actually be introduced to the wider Hartford community of responsible caretakers that will help them in their journey as they develop their, uh, their craft, their hobby, their ability to do this the right way and possibly help people in the future. So, uh, and also if somebody gets to the point where uh, people are concerned that the chickens welfare is not being well taken care of, we have uh, met with other members that have chickens outside of city limits that are willing to rehouse them, or people, part of the extended community can help take care of them. And I've looked at different communities on Craigslist, and even if you put up, or even Facebook Marketplace or something, uh, chickens need a home, uh, a lot of people respond and greatly uh, take those. So that would be another way that we ensure that the enforcement part of the city doesn't really have to be taxed in order to make sure that this is happening the right way. So, um, and they can get a hold of us through our Facebook group or we'll make our information available so that we can get ahead of it. So, as a Hartford resident, I want to have more enriching opportunities in town with my kids. You see that move with Feather, and he's going to be playing on the field later. He's our baseball fan. And then that's Kelly back there. She's an original member of the group, and she really wants to make sure this happens. 
Uh, I think uh, I think it would be neat to exchange garden vegetables for eggs, all grown by my neighbors. Uh, we see the chickens, the six chickens, as uh, essentially like having a garden in your backyard. It's kind of a, like a combination of pets and a garden, but you know you can leave them outside and have fun with them. They're super hardy too. The people in Sioux Falls and Brandon have had them over winters, and they, as long as the coop is made the right way, uh, they'll survive and they'll be great. Uh, Hartford could participate in the next annual tour of coop. That's a brown t-shirt that you're seeing. Uh, uh, Stephanie, uh, we could discuss it more with you. But essentially what that is, is uh, people from the community, the surrounding community neighbors, uh, they actually come and discuss best practices on how to care for your chickens, like how to actually winterize them, how to get them ready for the spring, how to make look for any sort of ailments. And it's uh, not only providing the opportunity when that's happening, but also giving the access to a community that you can reach out to later on and not feel intimidated to actually ask you dumb questions, which I'm prone to do. Um, so, yeah, and this connection to our ag community as well, uh, our, my kids, they don't, they're one generation removed from farmers and they don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think that's kind of sad because I grew up on my grandma's farm and I was able to connect with uh, the ag community that way. And I just want to be able to pass on that kind of tradition that we had and kind of show appreciation for what it takes to actually care for animals, care for a garden, and what our extended farming community actually does for us and for the world. And I feel with that kind of thing, instead of them being on their iPads all day, they can actually have something to connect that way a little better. So, uh, so I think that this will give another uh, inclusive thing to our community to participate and build bonds uh, with each other and have an additional uh, wonderful thing that makes Hartford our home. And before we get to questions, I will say that I do have two subject matter experts here that have dealt with the writing of the Sioux Falls Ordinance and ensuring that uh, things are going well with it. That's uh, Tony and Helen. And then uh, Stephanie is from uh, Food and Coop and uh, the, the, she knows all about these things and takes care of chickens and is ready to take questions from me, uh, KC Top and our two experts. And don't ask these kids any questions. They're going to act like they're shy until they get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody got any questions? So, and I know re I read somewhere where there's a, and I don't see it here, but there's a uh, certain amount of feed that has to be cut from the neighbor's property, mm -hmm. and and then 20 feet, I know, was from streams and yada, yada, yada. I don't remember what that was, but... Can you review with me those parameters real quick? Right, so uh, let's start, let me get to that part of the ordinance so I'm looking specifically. The, the idea is, is that we don't want to encroach on our neighbors uh, to a point that it's unreasonable. Um, mm -hmm. So less than 10 feet from the door or window of any dwelling, a locked by place. So that's, uh, we don't want people leaning them up against their houses or even against like their neighbor's houses or anything like that. Uh, then manure storage will be 20 feet away from stream, tributaries, ditches, or storm water. So if people have like a side yard or something like that, and uh, they want to put their chicken coop close to where the storm drainage area is, we want to prevent that so that uh, all these things contribute to a nuisance of having these chickens around. So we don't, we want to prevent that at all costs. And so as far as away from property lines, I believe I have 10 feet in here. Yeah. I think I see that. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, to 10 feet, we think that's reasonable, and the, the reason for that is if uh, your neighbor built the fence that you two share, we don't want somebody to start nailing their chicken coop to it or anything else like that. We just kind of want to respect our neighbor's boundaries. And mm -hmm. with this ordinance, we want to ensure that we don't get into a, a negative dispute with our neighbors just because somebody wants to kind of go outside the lines a little bit. I would assume the next step would be if we if we're going if we're going to discuss this, it would have to be put on a future future agenda. So we're not going to act on it tonight since this is just in the visitor section. We appreciate all the information, but we're not going to uh, act on it this evening. We have to go on a future future agenda. Uh, I also understand that in Hartford. Kelly Point, RT, and what's the other? There's three subdivisions that have covenants mm -hmm. that do, don't allow it. 
most all the, the newer ones, Kelly Point, um, Turtle, Creek Western, Highlands. Turtle Creek Highlands, Western mm -hmm. Meadows, um, South Main doesn't even allow them, yeah. um, Party, so it's most of the newer, so this one applied to them anyway, because their covenants don't allow it, basically. Right. Yeah. right. Um, so there's certain products. If you do an act in order, there are certain parts of town that will affect and certain ones that it won't affect. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got any action or other questions? No? We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for all the information. Yeah. All right. And, uh, See what happens. I'll be looking forward to the next meeting. All right. Yeah. Hopefully, I can come, but <laughs> we'll be able to. Right? Uh, if if uh, everyone doesn't mind, we've got little guys and we've got busy people, is it okay if we can go? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, That's all great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And you're back. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, and then you'd only need a conditional use permit, which requires coming to the board for a major home occupation. And that major home occupation is basically if you don't can't follow these rules, you got to come to the planning and zoning board and kind of go over your hours of operation, the number of vehicles you can have parked outside, and they can look at all that. So we kind of switched it back to that. Instead of everything requiring a conditional use permit, minor ones, as long as you follow our regulations, allow major ones, you still got to get the conditional use permit. So that's probably the biggest change on, on there for it. And then the last section that we're changing is basically definitions. And it's, we added a definition for reverse frontage lot. We talk about it in our regulations, but we never had a definition in there. So it's just adding that to clarify it once again. And then we talked some on temporary signage. Um, basically, what we have currently in there talks about a temporary sign can be placed for a certain period of time, but we never defined what that period of time was. So not that we have a lot of issues with temporary signs, but if we were to have an issue, somebody put up 20 signs in their yard and kept them there, you know, for nine months, but since we don't define what that time period is, we really can't address it. So basically, we added verbiage under temporary signs Keep the same, you know, 32 square feet, but we define it can only be up there for 120 days unless you get a special permit basically from the city, the zoning administrator. That way, because we did talk about in, with the planning zoning board, what about real estate signs and, you know, properties that don't sell? And what about the West Central Trojan signs that all the parents buy and put in their yard? Obviously, they can stay there, you know, um, for an extended period of time. So just, kind of puts that time limit on there in case we would happen to have a problem with it. So those are the recommend changes from the planning and zoning board. Like I said, we, we've talked about this for quite a few meetings here now, and uh, they voted to recommend um, approval of this. All right. Got any motions or actions? Motion to approve ordinance. 7-11 as presented. Second. Any discussion? Just a question. Is it about every five years that Chicago tilts is 180 degrees and well? <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. <laughs> yeah. They do occasionally change it. They do occasionally come over. Any other discussion on this? Not we'll vote. Brennan? Yeah. Brennan? Yes. O'Hare? Yes. Skeel? Yes. And I'm going to yes. All right. We'll move down to second reading of Ordinance 709. Uh, this is the rezone that no action was taken on the first reading. Motion to deny second reading of Ordinance 709. Special assessment policy for streets. Tracy, you got any uh, little update on this one? So we looked at this at our last meeting, and basically these are just amendments to our um, general assessment policy. Um, what's highlighted in yellow is the same thing that was we looked at last meeting. I haven't changed anything. At that time, we decided to um, we're going to put uh, for. We're going to define basically between existing streets and new streets, and then we're going to put in there uh, a cap of $200 for existing streets. Any new streets, the assessment would be that cost or whatever it would be. And the only other change basically was to put um, a note at the end of it that this will be reviewed yearly to make it clear what looks at it. So 
Same thing we looked at last meeting, haven't changed anything from that time. Motion to approve resolution 2021-6 as presented. Sorry. Any discussion on this one? Not we'll vote. Randall. Yeah. Randall. Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Keel? Yes. And I'm yes. Next one is 2021-7. This is to amend the discretionary formula ordinance. Um, this one, um, basically, this is an uh, ordinance we've already enacted. Basically, um, for any new construction, gives a tax break on the assessments. We've had this in place for many years. Um, basically, it states that if you have new commercial buildings, um, first year you're assessed at 0%, the second at 25%. That's basically our tax break that we get give to new businesses coming into the city. The formula has not changed at all since we passed it. What has changed is that um, the state has changed their codified law number. So where we reference South Dakota codified law 10-6 and it, 137, it used to be 10635.2. So in order to stay consistent and reference the correct law number, we had to change all those codified law numbers in it. So like I said, what we give this to, what our formula is, nothing has changed. We just have to reference the correct codified law number since Peer Chase changed them. Any action by the council on this? Motion to approve resolution 2021-7 as presented. Second. Any further discussion? If not, I will Randall. Yes. Alara. Yes. Teal. Yes. Brenneman. Yep. And I'm the yes. All right. Next up is the application for a special event for Dakota Resources. They're going to have their 25th anniversary at uh, Buffalo Ridge Brewing on the 24th of September. And they're asking for open container, I assume, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and to close First Avenue from Main to the alley to the east. Correct. Yeah. Kelly just said that she couldn't stay for the full meeting, but um, it's pretty straightforward. September 24th from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. They want to hold this event um, at the brewery for Dakota Resources. Just asking um, for First Street, which is the street south of there, to be closed from Main to the alley, and then allow the use of alcohol on the sidewalks around the brewery and in that closure part. So um, all cells will be in the brewery on their property. Motion to approve special event for, that, for Dakota Resources at the BRB. That's true, that's it. A second. Any further discussion? Sir, <clears throat> frame of thought here. We're going to use that area on the street. Is there anything that says that they can and can't do there? They put up a big circus tent, you know, a big white tent on the street. Um, this is just a general future question. I mean, is that something we need to address, like what they can and can't do with the street other than block it off? They should ask for it in their special event okay. application if, if they want to do something like that, because here they are asking for basically just barricades and the use of alcohol. If they want, just like the debris comes in, you know, if they want to put a, a tent up somewhere, if they want to ask for something different, you know, they, they should include it on their permit and that, so you guys can be reviewing that. and deciding yes or no. Um, just like when they came with the market and asked for the picnic tables, you know, they included that, right. they wanted the right. use of it, so it all is approved, or, or if you decide not to approve, it's all on the permit, so, yeah. It's a good point, Mark. You know, honestly, the $5 for this doesn't cover the paperwork. <laughs> honestly, let you are <laughs> correct, we have that. Let, let alone it doesn't cover the city Coordinating the installation and the removal bringing of the barricades. Bringing out the yeah. barricades, taking back the barricades. So maybe that's a matter we need to discuss at a future meeting. For sure. And look at those types of that fee structure, if you will. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we've had that discussion here in yep. the office. Of, we've kind of had it with all the organizations asking to waive it. It's like, you know, five bucks. Maybe we should just collect it. You pay it if you want to have the event. And you, like I said, it doesn't yeah. even cover the paperwork or the, mm -hmm. the time associated with it. Yeah. It's straight across the board for everybody. Yeah. It costs you 20 bucks for a golf cart per minute. It should cost you 20 bucks. Cause Special event for mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's something that we put on a future agenda to look at. Yeah, I think we should do that. Perfect. Good point. Anything else on this? We had a motion and a second already, correct? Mm -hmm. Nothing else. We'll vote. Brennan. Yeah. Brennan. Yes. O'Hara. Yes. Keel. Yes. And yes. All right, the next one's also a application for a block party on South Main. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she is. Hey. Hi. Um, all we're asking for is to walk off the road. Okay. We've done it for three, four years now? Yeah. Day of the year. That's Motion to approve the application for Black Party in South Maine. Third. Any further discussion? Um, so what's this? How does that work for these barricades, Craig? You guys drop, mm -hmm. drop them off down there, and then they. The, mm -hmm. so you, guys, you guys put them up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we put them up and take them. They said you pick, pick them up on Monday or whatever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is another one of those five dollar deals. And that's, it was a lot, five dollars. <laughs> tell the neighbors, it's going up next year. <laughs> tell, them, tell them to be prepared. Oh, yeah. Whoever's in charge next year, be prepared. Well, it's not yeah. a social event, it's just a block party. It's not like an organization. Not, we're not selling beer. You guys are all loaded down there on that end of the street, I hear. Yeah. All right, any other discussion on this? That will vote. Keel? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Randall? Yes. Brennan? Yeah. And I will yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Have fun. We will. <laughs> All yeah, right, we'll move. Come and join us. Yeah, I <laughs> have. I threatened to come before and I haven't. So. Uh, the deputy is not here, but we got his report, I think, printed, and it was in our. Yeah, he, he did have, he had a few days off last week, so he didn't have his report by Friday, but he sent it over this morning. And he was working today, and I'm not, he maybe must have got a call or something, as they because he was assuming coming here, so. There was somebody heading toward Colton yeah, today. Get out of okay, so he must have got called out, so. Um, the only thing I mentioned to Teresa when I looked through this is, um, we had quite a few car break-ins, and that's that larceny number that went from went up to 15. I'm assuming that that's... That's what I said, I'm assuming that, you know, yeah. about a We were week, hoping he was going to be here. We know, what, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a night of kind of a rash of break in. Yeah. So that's what I kind of assuming is. I, we were going to ask Damien for sure, but... <laughs> yeah. Again, the sheriff's office landline, that's big number two. It's almost one a day. 24th. So we're calling the 911. Yeah, I'm going to call them in, yeah. And not really. Or the non emergency. Or the non emergency yeah, number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that could be the, the non emergency number as well with questions or concerns or whatnot. It tracks all of that. Yeah, because gotcha. it may not necessarily be an emergency. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. If you find any different on that, just shoot us an email. Yep, I'll, I'll ask them about it and I'll shoot you an email about it. All right, we'll move on to Amy Farr's report. The information's in the pack and I don't have a lot to update, just continuing to get phone calls about different businesses that are interested in the Hartford area. And then working on several chamber events coming up. So. Well, we have the Hartford Black Party coming up as well as the golf and we're on August 4th. 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was already grandfathered in by that one. Thank you. 
I'd be the first one to charge the. <laughs> yeah, we were in the front row. So, yeah, thanks. Go for it. Looking for a corporate sponsorship there. Yes. Oh, we would like yeah. at least Come two back. to three more. Fixed income. <laughs> Fixed income. <laughs> I wouldn't be pulling your leg. <laughs> All right. Any questions for Amy? Um, Creekside Meats. Mm -hmm. so, do they have an estimated opening on that? They said late July, maybe early August. That's just one user. Just one tenant in there. Not two. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I'll put <laughs> <laughs> Is that block party? Is that a Wednesday? Yes. yes. July 21st. About two and a half weeks out. That's going to be downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Helping out the downtown business is absolutely nice of y'all to celebrate your birthday. You're welcome. <laughs> we got it when we planned the date so we could do a special singing. <laughs> so I hope you can make it. Not a lot of change from the last meeting, actually been pretty quiet. So the design standards, um, we're actually uh, going over that and presenting that to PNZ on the 27th. Um, the CAP and updates, uh, we will actually be meeting tomorrow morning and discussing, discussing next year's budget. Um, overall and project-wise, not any uh, major ones there on the wastewater feasibility study. You've probably heard enough about that last week. Um, <laughs> and Craig and Rachel can plan to the site, they haven't determined the time, but the SBR system is the one that they're going to review. And then we will be planning to actually put together the final report. So that will be actually have that final report in your direction. Um, on the community development plan and the downtown plan, our next big item is targeting the week of July 19th for this set of uh, user group meetings. Okay. From the dunk tank, uh, the information that we received back on that, actually the number one item of voting for folks was actually downtown of where they would invest their dollars. So I was a little interested to see that and not amenities. It's almost always amenities. Um, but, uh, but I thought that was a really good indication of the you know, focus. So. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Any questions for me? Uh, I've become the point person for Rance Peterson. Apparently, he's made the corrections. Oh, nice! So we will take a look at that. Yeah. Checking them out, I guess. Yeah. Draw shoulders. <laughs> Perfect. Anything else for Bailey? Uh, just a couple updates um, on my report. Um, street lights downtown here. I did contact uh, Ryan uh, with Meyer Electric. Uh, <clears throat> he's sending me over a cost estimate. We think it's going to take lay those down. Uh, so then we'll start coordinating things with Sioux Valley to get those switched out. Uh, trees. Mike has them all done right now for the EAB. So they're, they've been treated for the year. Uh, be next two years from now when these will get treated again. And then um, one other thing, just the uh, sports complex, we did get the shade canopies up. They survived the winds yesterday. Um, they are, from what I've read in the directions on them, they will get left standing year round. It's just you roll the tarps. Um, they are filled with water, so we will be draining that out and put sand in them. So we can still move them, but they'll be heavy enough to keep from moving and not freeze and break the tanks. So. There are nice tanks in there. <laughs> <laughs> Will they handle the freezing if I just need no, the water? No, for, you can. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of guys do freeze them. <laughs> That's all I really have in my report for updates. Somebody has, I guess you want me to say something? Yes. Like so, with the lagoons out there, I really don't know if it's from just the extreme heat and dry conditions, low flows, if that's what's causing them to have the odor. Blowers are working properly out there. We did have them go down last night in the weather from lightning strike. 
um, but always they're working fine. We did get some enzymes to add to them. That usually does help. They got put in two weeks ago. Or it was? Okay. Something like that. Did you find anything out about anybody that possibly had done some? I haven't other? had a chance to even talk to them. Okay. That'd be the only ones that could be something to be the hotel. I haven't had a chance to get up there and talk to them yet. So okay. I'll make that on my list to hopefully get up there tomorrow. So. It's just, I mean, I, as, if my memory serves me right, this has actually been the worst since yeah. we've lived here six years. <laughs> I've not noticed it to this extent for this extent of time. Mm -hmm. Before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it might be such a thing that there's, everything's just staying low, and it's not going up in the air atmosphere. Oh. Yeah. I did notice there was a fair amount of inversion mm -hmm. on the 4th, and I think it was another day I was going to spray, and yeah. I was like, eh, can't do it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and as far as like the, the hotel, usually the bar screen, if it, if, when you go in there, you can usually smell something's upset, sure. you know, if something's not right on there, so that's before it even gets out to the room, so, yeah. But we'll keep trying to hopefully get something figured out more than the Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have a question on the streetlights. So, aren't they Sioux Valley owned streetlights? These ones here, they won't claim that ones downtown. <laughs> they will put new ones in, but they said that they're technically ours. They have been maintaining them, but okay. they're our okay. okay. city okay. ones and poles. Right. So that's why they want us to have them taken down. Sure. So I'll coordinate. There will be probably three or four days that we might not have any lights downtown except for the solar ones. So That'd be a nice task. Yeah, so we'll, once they get them shut down, we start, as soon as Myers starts laying them down, we'll start jackhammering the concrete all right behind them, and then Sioux Valley will be coming in right behind us, that's what I'm trying to coordinate, so we can take them down and set something up right away and just keep moving through it, so. You can do it a lot cheaper by hiring a sign company. You're going to need a torch to take those down anyway. Yeah. You don't have to be fancy with them. No. You know, I hire a signs for, what, 400 bucks. If the city has the time. Yeah, to I, I told him to send me a price first, so yeah. I went to get that from him, yeah. get a quote. Yeah. And I might be, maybe get somebody with extended room that can reach up with something to throw a chain on. I don't know. It's, Never said I'm an extended room, but I have with these signs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to throw me a quote? <laughs> I, I, I can, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. we can do it pretty cheap. Yeah, I, I really do. don't know technically I can use that. No, no, it's fine. That's why I keep saying it. you should use a sign. Yeah. I'll do some, I'll check the sports. Like I said, I'm sure we're going to have to torch all the board. Or another one of the sign companies, really. Yeah, I mean, anyone. They'll, they'll all do it. We have set holes for us all the time. That's kind of hopefully they do a couple of late in the street last night. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I could run into one of my leads, bump it. Then you mentioned about the lift stations, about. We had two of them go down last night, so the power, but um, it would be nice to eliminate the fuel in the future. So. We didn't have any sewer backups or anything like that. We spent about an hour, an hour and a half trying to get things up and keep things moving. So, so we good shape, um, but it'll definitely be nice to eliminate a couple of them in the near future. So. Well, they were busy at the leaf dump this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> I went down to dump off one trash can full and there was people down there. And our policy is after like tomorrow we'll go around if they've got to lay it on the mold or we'll pick them out the next couple of days. And then um, after that they're on the room. So Yeah. Did you open it up all day? No, we just it's left it open just normal hours. Yeah. We talked about it but then nobody's there to monitor it and are you opening it up for county? We just want to stay consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I did see our monitor go up to pick up the building after me, after me and ask the doctor. So the my expectation is that they're open till eight or whenever the posted time is. Right. If they close two minutes early. They should be. And they should be. <laughs> yeah. I we, heard about it. We've heard about it. Don't open up the I heard about it. Don't open five minutes <laughs> late either. Yeah. So we did have a monitor last year. I was five minutes late, and geez, I had lied, and they were stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's all I got. Unless anybody else has anything else. All right. Anything else for Craig? Keep an eye on them. We'll go. Let's keep that.
All right, Karen. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add. Um, park rep started this morning. They didn't get rained out. Uh, I think it went good. Yes. Talked to Laura afterwards. They have about 30 participants per age group, so that's a nice manageable group. So mm -hmm. they are doing well this morning. Still selling golf cart permits, that's good. Still selling pet licenses. Yeah. Y'all have to run the numbers here again now that June's over. Yeah. Let's see how we did. Our <laughs> certain pet licenses, yeah. <laughs> They're still coming in. So. About a half a million dollars more in the general fund. Mm -hmm. That's good. Like the governor war chest, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right, any questions for Karen? Not Teresa, you got anything to add? Um, just point out a couple things on report. Grants, um, no real updates there except for on the dog parks. Um, you know, the Girl Scout troop had applied for an AARP grant and that was denied. Um, I think they said they had like 3,700 request applications. So there's, there's a lot of people looking for grants and not that much money out there. It's kind of the norm all across the board. Um, but we still have our application in for the, for the GFMP, and we should hear something about that either this, I think this winter is the we said that. We should know by next year, um, early next year. Um, updates, just um, with Stockwell, so just what they're working on. Um, as you know, they suit up to we're out there to correct the issue with the road by the culverts, so that should be taken care of. Um, I did see correspondence from FEMA asking for additional information again, so it was all kind of back and forth on the Lomar with FEMA. We're still doing that. Um, and then the other thing, uh, they um, are adding, you know, at our previous meeting, or last month, we had made a motion for them to go ahead and add water to 12th Street and the extra sewer out to Naps Landing. So they'll incorporate that in the plans. I think it'll probably take a couple months to get that. We should be ready for a fall bid if we want to, which probably sounds like a good timeline to bid for people maybe looking into next year. So, um, fall like October or fall like late August? I think October, November probably is, <laughs> is fall looking. As dry as it is, I think the, there's going to be dirt contractors that'll be working. Price yeah, looking, yeah. yeah. I would think so. Working, working yeah. 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 Price will start to come around too. So. Yeah, they are. Prices on that stuff coming. So I think as soon as they get the plan updated, we should look at bidding it. Yeah. So get, get, on, get on the radars for them. So, um, as far as the sports complex, did, what is Stockwell looking at? Adding stub it in or running all the way in? Plans were run it in and stub out to where the future concession is going to be. Yeah, so we'd run it in. Run it all the way in. Yeah. Okay. That would be. Pour up one time, and that way that can settle all okay. get stuff going in. Okay. So concession stands done. It's, it's there. But, yeah. So at some point when we do a building, you know, yeah, we're gonna be there. Okay. Let's put it into the north or south of the sidewalk that went in last year. Is that what's that? They put it into the north or to the south of that sidewalk um, that went in last year. So it's gonna fall where the future road's gonna go. Yeah. And then it'll split the uh, the existing field and the new field. Coming from the north. Coming in from the north, yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's about All right. I have unless you have questions. Any questions for Teresa? Just a comment. Uh, and if there's a group of pet lovers in this community, it's dogs. <laughs> so we got a half a million dollars more in our general fund this year than we did last year at this time. We, we're not going to do anything with the dog park until 2022 at this pace. Right, we're waiting on a grant. Right. And it's potentially, I mean, it was substantial. You gave us the number. Mm -hmm. was, it, was it 50? Yeah. Was it the whole thing or was it half? About 20? Of the grant? Oh, that was the, what, what do you the expect cost. the grant to, to potentially be? Oh, yeah. how, how do I appease those dog owners again when they ask for the dog park? And I say, well. You never know if you're going to get what exactly. you requested or if you're going to get part of it. I mean, I hope we get as much as we can, but I don't. But we started. Wait. You know, right, and, and I'm just saying sometimes there's an ROI, and you take it. You, you know, you wait for it, or you right. take it now. Right. You know. The thing is with the grant, though. So if you get something, no matter what that amount may be, 
usually you can't start any work sure. until you know you get that awarded. Right. So I think see what you get for the grant, and then even if it isn't the full amount we ask for, then you know you know we have to. Come it's hard to look at the whatever. constituents and say we waited for a grant and we didn't get anything. So we're, we're three years talking about a dog park. Tell well, we started the shade trees. And Envision has talked about helping out with that as well. Right, true. So we talked other about that. that. That's the other talking. part of that. I think if this council fixed it in their head to do the dog park, the vision money and some city money, we can just move it, it make it we possible just move without the ground. Yeah, and not, not drag our feet over your hand, but just want to plant that seed. Yeah. You remember that estimate, Craig? I want to say that it's like 52 grand is what it was mm -hmm. for the estimate. So, uh, that was the fence and that was everything. Electric water. Electric. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Not electricity. Not water. electricity. Not Just, electricity. Just uh, water. seasonal water. Yeah, that's yeah. right now. Yeah. You wouldn't need electric out there right away. If it was right. street lights there. Right. Sorry. Yeah, right. So what do you think? Should we put that on the agenda for next meeting and get that, if we're going to have that discussion and make the decision? That's the only way it's going to happen, I suppose. I'd say let's get that on for the next meeting. Let's at least have the discussion. Can we have a commitment for Envision by then? We could discuss it at our meeting tomorrow. I mean, let's do it. That's why we could invite you. Let's discuss it at our meeting. <laughs> I sent out an email saying that it was canceled due you? to the holiday and the light agenda. Oh, that's <laughs> Sorry. It was all the that's office good. working. Honestly. <laughs> no money on the No phone lights. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else for Teresa? Question. So if we do that, though, is there anything that kind of shoots us, excuse me, in the foot for the grant if we're moving? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah, we don't if we move forward, if anything. Yeah. We lose the chance for the we lose grant. The for the grant. Yeah. But like Travis said, What's our what's our ROI? ROI. Let's keep our because there are you're right. There's a gazillion dogs in this town. Some of them will license us now. <laughs> a lot of them will license us now. This is a lot. Of, I think it's a way to capture a lot more licenses. And you do. Thank you, dog license. It's going to be posted right there on the dog park. Just because it's posted doesn't mean it'll happen. Well, I think Aaron's going like to set down there. I think, don't you think? What? I think Karen just said she would sit down there. Not in my job. <laughs> oh. Do what he does is sign. Do what he does is sign. Oh, I know that this is going down. Well, the I can road. split it with you. <laughs> really oh, but what if, yeah. because the Girl Scouts are, you know, very uh, engaged in this and passionate about it, I know there would have to be an adult there, but what if there were was a person randomly there because i don't think we could make it a full-time situation that did check for dog licenses and rabies think it just a city staff. huh I'm pretty sure would that be i think for staff? insurance wise they won't let us have sure you guys have to issue them yeah. correct well no, no not to like issue them but even just somebody even hire somebody part-time like you said yeah. sitting there I just, I, I guess I feel like it would be a good monitoring system. I'm just not sure how to go about it yeah. and how that could all work together. I'm just throwing thoughts out this there. This could be something, you know, code enforcer could stop periodically on days and who's out there, hey, can I see your license? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the rules, which will post that you have to be licensed, but, you know, they can come by there and randomly check the licensing and whatnot. So, yeah. Then yeah. you, I mean, you're, being, you're not going to touch them on this. Sure. No, the ones that aren't, yeah, they yeah. maybe have a chance of catching them. So, okay. All under, all under All right. So, we get to the same. Okay, doke. Thanks, Teresa. We'll keep moving on. Old business. Now we're going to talk a little bit about logistics of the creation of Park and Rec Board. Review possible members. The last meeting, the mayor, I think, uh, instructed us to come with a couple possible member names. Do I remember right? Yep. He kind of wanted the council to throw some names out for him to consider because um, 
um, for the ordinance, he will be appointing them, and then you guys will vote, you know, right. council for approval or not. But at least if he has some names, he can go talk with them and discuss, you know, the possibility of sitting on the board. So, take a listen if you guys have any names. Yep, I do. I got a couple. Uh, Allie Crittenden, down on uh, Crestman Circle, I think, is their address down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Matt Evans up on uh, Sagehorn. I agree with Mr. Winter. I think uh, a member or somebody from the Legion would probably at least should be on there for consideration. Um, I know Mark Monahan threw out Troy Zars and things before, and I've kind of been emailing a little bit back and forth and giving him a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't have any issues with that. Right. Gail Blocker also looks best in this community. That's our pickleball representative. There you go. That's our pickleball representative. Got to have a pickleball representative. <laughs> Anybody else got any uh, names to add? If not, we need to keep adding to that list because we need to have a. Each <laughs> of Yeah, I. I added that in. Oh, yep. They're on the list. It'd be nice to have a pool of 10 or 12 that we could at least discuss, I would say, would be the best. BJ, you probably can't speak for him, but you know, Josh Mulder uh, was coming to some meetings. Is he still showing some interest in <laughs> what you guys do? I mean, is that, is that somebody you could reach out to, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think Josh would be a good candidate. I mean, I just like the idea of just getting more people involved. Yeah. Yeah. And I did talk to Josh. He stopped by in my driveway and visited a little bit with him and kind of planted the seed of the board. And, and he did express interest or oh, consideration, at least. Is that nine? I had a great talk Six. with Seth. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, from. <laughs> A little breaching. Keep breaching. <laughs> I did have a nice visit with Matt Evans, so I, I think he's, he's got some interest in the sense he's the kind of a soccer tie that doesn't hurt us any. He's done a lot of work on that committee. So. Well, we can give these names to the mayor for a start. Uh, At least for a start. Reach out yeah. and, and see if we can get anybody committed and then we can move on from there if we have more seats to fill. So. Yeah. That's good. And the other point you had on there was the transfer of the existing funds. I guess that's something that we will talk about when we get ready to create this. Right. So just start thinking about it. I put in your packet. So currently we have set aside, and, and there, it's all in the general fund that the money is, right. but basically we are keeping track of money that, like I said, has been allocated previously by the board. The Bike and Rec Trial Committee has about 45,000 sitting there. And then the Sports Complex Committee has a little over 200,000 sitting there as well. Now, like I said, it's all part of the general fund. It doesn't get dispersed unless council agrees to it. But as we talked at our previous meeting, um, with the creation of the Park and Rec Board, we shouldn't be allocating funds to individual entities anymore. They should go to the Park and Rec board account. Obviously, they can't spend it without your guys' approval, but um, at some point, we'll want to put this under the park and rec board account or a portion of this, or however you guys want to do it. So, I'll start thinking about that so we can keep moving forward with those discussions. That's something we can handle it by the time. Yep, exactly. Yep. Perfect. And that, that's kind of what I thought of because I definitely want to set up budget for 2022 mm -hmm. to. Just reflect a park and rec board account, and that's all. Yeah. So, um, this might, I hope this doesn't throw a muck in it. Have we, David, ever said to you guys to take a look at the sports? And the we talked about it, but then we were waiting for the community I, feedback. I said, in the lab, and at one time you had kind of asked them to come up with cost estimates, and like I said, I think you guys are just waiting. You on. guys really haven't done a deep dive. Mm -mm. No. no. We most yeah. certainly can. Huh? I mean, we most certainly can. You know, yeah. We evaluate the plan that is today and... Yeah. But... That's a pretty good direction. 
because I would think that if if there's going to be discussion about the baseball field, we're going to really have to take a look at how that's going to. I would assume how that's going to fit in because that's a different size than what we got out there right now. So, and you know the other thing I thought and you didn't you didn't mention this in your talk is do they play most of their games at night? We gonna need lights. We have no lights out there. <clears throat> I was gonna ask you that, and then I never. That might be true, uh, but right now, you know, if it's during the summertime, keep in mind how light it is. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, we won't run into the problem we have with one game where they had to call it off because of the insects. Another one in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. That was the first. You guys are too good at computer control for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just another thought, you know, as this deal. Because when we've talked about this before, putting lights out there is a... Half a million dollars. Yeah, that's a, that's a big expense. Big expense. Mm -hmm. That's a huge expense. So, anyway. That's so, that's question good. with... Uh, I'm assuming that... The Board's not going to be um, taking care of the like the daily stuff like uh, benches resurfacing or sandblasting them and painting those. I mean, is this something I need to figure into my budget next year for the parks and stuff like that? Is to do some of the smaller upkeep? So we're now we're taking it out of their funds because like we um, did some of the soccer. Just looking at some of the stuff we spent this year, we had a couple thousand just on the soccer. Uh, goals getting those blasted and repainted and we've done some benches and different things like that. I mean, if that group's not going to really look at the small picture and leave that maintenance stuff just the way it normally goes, then I'm going to have to have, make sure we figure budget-wise to... Wonder the park and rec count, we can have a maintenance line okay. item. Yeah, so just so we keep that in mind. Right. Yeah. 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 I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. To, to that point, um, I, let's see, there was some the budget's coming up. So. <laughs> Looking at your meeting minutes, DJ, there was um, either put handicapped parking signs up. And, and to me, I think, man, that's a city job. That should really fall under the city's responsibility to buy those signs, put those up. So I don't know. If those requests should. Uh, they weren't actually handicapped parking signs, they were handicapped city. Signs. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so there's two designated spaces next to each dugout uh, on the interior portions of the field that are paved. Yeah. Uh, so we, and of course they're the closest to the dugout. So since there wasn't any shade, those are the first spots to fill in with, uh, you know, lawn chairs. Lawn, when the people who need those areas show up, they're usually later to the game, and then they don't have accessibility to the shade, nor do they the uh, handicap slots. Okay. We fixed the shade issue, so that shouldn't be as much of a problem. Uh, and now we will put the signs on the fence to indicate that they're for handicap uh, accessibility only. Did you guys get the signs yet? I don't know if they got them or not. I so know I was talking to Tony. Um, I mentioned him that putting those signs up going to block views. So people are going to have sit there and look at a sign. I think they're going to put them down below. So, otherwise, I suggested just painting our handicap logo, our street marker on the pads, two shots. Sure. And I don't know if they were ordered yet. So I don't know if you ordered or not, but I, I told them we'd get up with our stencil and paint them on the yeah. it, it, just in case. But otherwise, if you get up, put them down below. So. Yeah, it, it is absolutely needed. I've been up there witnessed it firsthand. I've to ask people to, to move. It's just an uncomfortable situation for everybody involved. So if it was just marked clearly, um, you know, the, the, now that we have the sidewalks in, they used a ton. So that was a huge step forward for the accessibility of the park. Yep. Since, we're, since we're talking uh, sports and rec, can, can, can you tell me why, what, $2,615 roughly for taxes paid to the IRS. I thought, aren't you guys a 501c3? I would assume that was probably for the Chase the Ace that we did. That's for the Chase. Year. Okay, that makes sense. I'm not sure. It wasn't clearly spelled out what that was for, so my wheels were. Yeah. In our, our last uh, complex committee meeting, we had 16 people show up, so there's uh, a large expressed interest in getting those fields showed up. So I know that when you guys 
16. It might have been six. Our numbers have greatly increased. So that's good. All right. Anything else on park and rec? If not, we're going to move on to new business. Anything else? All right. Under new business, we got a couple items. Review the bonus for pay for the pool personnel. Yeah, I um, put this on the agenda, actually. Um, me and Amy Steve, the pool manager, have been discussing this for a couple of years. And ever since I've been employed with the city, um, basically the last two weeks um, of when the pool's been open, we have given a 50 cent bonus per hour to those employees. I think it's just started off as an incentive to get them to work the full season. Say, you're here for the season, <coughs> you know, you'll get a bonus for the last two weeks you work, and you know, that's an incentive to stay versus people quitting midstream or whatnot. So, um, which is great, but um, we don't really think that maybe the fairest way to do it, because um, currently, um, just some examples. Last year we had a great worker from college, worked lots of hours, was willing to take shifts for other people, you know, came in, rarely asked for time off. They had to go back to college at the beginning of August, didn't get any bonus because they didn't work the last two weeks, you know. Hence you'll have kind of on the reverse end, you'll have your employees and, and it's always this way every year, good employees and so-so employees, but you'll have ones that ask for every weekend off, doesn't want to work any nights, we'll work one or two shifts during the week, but then when you meet it at the last two weeks, they'll work more hours and then they'll get a bonus, more of a bonus than what should be. So we just talked about it. It'd be great to reward our employees for the actual hours they work. So the ones that are willing to work, willing to fill the shifts, you know, which we always have trouble doing, they get more of a bonus than the ones that are always asking for time off. So we'd like you guys to consider paying, um, in essence, it's kind of bumping their pay rate up some, which I think we need to look at next year anyway, because I think we're pretty low with our pay rate, but look at giving them a bonus for all the hours work. So then it's rewarding those, like I said, that do put in the extra work, work the extra shifts and the time. Um, I just went off of kind of what we paid out last year, the hours, um, got a few scenarios that we gave them, you know, 10 cent bonus or 15 cents or 25 cents, what it would cost the city. And so I'd like you guys to consider that. Obviously, unless they work once again, the whole season with us, they don't get it. You know, um, going back to college isn't a disqualification. If you quit on the city, you know, midway through, you already had two quit already. So obviously they'd be ineligible for this, but if you work, you know, the time you're supposed to work with the city. So if they give their two weeks notice and quit. You don't give a two week not, notice. Not <laughs> right. And they usually don't give a two week notice in the pool personnel. They're just, uh, <laughs> usually, well, I'm thinking I'm of, I don't want to work Friday, so I'm, I'm going to quit on uh, Thursday. <laughs> so. I'm thinking of the example you gave with the college student. Yeah. That, they would be eligible because right. obviously they got to go back to school. Yeah. It's not that they're quitting to... Right. Just with the job, it's right. they got to go back to school. All right, so yeah. sure. And we've always allowed that for, we also pay for, um, you know, if they work the full season, we reimburse their certification costs with that. We do that for, like I said, college students that go back. Obviously, they got to quit when their school starts, so they're not quitting per se. They're right. working as long as they can, right. and so we allow reimbursement for that too. So. Okay. Honorably discharged, so Honorably, there you go. Perfect <laughs> way to, to put wow. it in there. Good reference. Um, All right. Any thoughts or motions, or do we want to discuss this further? What do you think? I think the 25 cents an hour is valid, especially when you look at their hourly rates. Like you said, those are those are um, not excessive by any stretch. No, they 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 don't get paid big wages to start with, <laughs> and right. you know. Bumping over a quarter if they fulfill the whole season with us is, I think, worth it. And, and you really, if it's if you pay the max and it's five hundred and some bucks over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven employees, that's yeah. I think we could probably swing that. Craig spends a month left on the new dump truck. He does, or something on the new dump. <laughs> something on the new dump. Hey, so, hey, so <laughs> <laughs> Still using them. <laughs> wow. I'm going to make that as a motion, Travis. 
Uh, motion to approve the bonus pay as presented at 25 cents an hour. I'll second. Any further discussion? Uh, one, I'll make one comment. When Teresa and I were talking this afternoon about this, she knows she's going to have to start looking at increasing the wages there. It's going to yeah. just one of them deals. We're going to have to start paying more yeah. to get these we kids. We talked about that even with public with work works. Time. You know, yep. we just. We have very yeah. few applicants at all. We were kind of struggling yeah. this year, and I think to compete with you know, McDonald's or something, they pay more than we do. Okay. sustain a 17 year old for their public works helper the summer. He was either 15 or 16. I told him, I said, You don't talk to my guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so. All right. Uh, any, more, uh, any more discussion on this? Not a vote. O'Hara. Keel. Yes. Randall? Yes. Randall? Yep. And I'm a yes. All right, the last item on new business is discuss ARP, which is the American something. Relief plan. So Relief basically plan. it's more COVID money that we're getting from the government. And so not to be confused with AARP. Right. Yeah, right. that's what I thought. Yeah. So. I don't, no decision needs to be made. I just want you guys to start thinking about this. Um, we have been allocated about 570000 as our share that the Hartford should get for um, out of this second round of funding here. I kind of put in your packet a list of things it could be used for um, that's approved. Obviously, anything COVID related, um, whether it's PPE equipment, whether it's um, if anybody got laid off during the time, which obviously we didn't have that, you know, payroll expenses, relief programs, um, anything like that. If there's kind of any economic impacts, um, that also can be um, utilized. Um, we are all considered essential workers here. I like that part. But we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but but we really haven't. Uh, nobody had lost wages or anything due to because we the two that had to get tested we paid them through it so we really don't have a um, I guess to show that we had to pay out any money or lose wages there. The one that I think is um, very interesting is they are allowing um, infrastructure improvements, so water, sewer, base. we got a project going up north that we didn't get any grants for whatsoever so that may be a, a good use for these funds or a portion of these funds or whatnot a um, couple other optional things um, we've kind of talked about here in um, the office um, we've talked about doing a, a text notification system to our citizens that could be used because it's a communication thing so I think that can fall under these funds we've talked about in the past I think it's something maybe we should explore a little bit more. Um, uh, we have, you know, still the barricades up there, our little um, string barricades here coming into City Hall. Um, we've talked about doing something more permanent, like maybe a, a glass door there um, coming down the hall. Um, we really like the barricades there. It just kind of controls who's wandering through the office. So um, last year, actually, we invested prices, and we can look at that again if that's something you're interested in. Um, one thing I did want to point out, Humboldt Ambulance did call me a couple weeks ago. They want to get one of the power cots for the ambulance. They brought this up last year with COVID funds, and that was an approved expense. And supposedly Tim Evans said that it is approved expense this go around. Now um, they would like it's like forty thousand dollars. They would like us to pay twenty thousand, and Humboldt to use their funds for twenty thousand. I have not got confirmation that it's approved one. I have an email into the state to see if that's allowed and if we can use our funding for another entity again. So um, don't want to act on that unless we get confirmation that we can do that. Don't want to spread the money and then we don't get reimbursed. But I am checking into that if that's something we want to consider. So with the uh, text notification or email notification system, could we stretch it as far as to put digital billboards on the Welcome to Hartford signs, the three of those. You can check into that. It's say a mask so mandate. Then it's communication it's a, with your public during emergencies. Yeah, so during public, yeah. You can certainly put stuff on billboards. Bit of a emergency. reach, but I like it. <laughs> I can check into that. So. Yeah, I'll feel That's right. That's right. So, 
just want you guys to start thinking about this, see what it can be used for, and if you have any other ideals, we will be discussing this in the future. So we'll right. have it on a future agenda at some point. All right. Do we have anything on the correspondence? I'm just going to, a couple things I've seen tonight in the news or whatever, uh, Minneapolis County is putting a burn ban on, but it does not affect the cities at this time. So that is in place. And then the DOT got a pile of money too through the spring for whatever just awarded through recently to do similar state workload. Are they going to do the, I think so. Uh, Are they going to do the turn off too. on 38 on the Mickelson? Are they going to do the turning lane? They are, yeah, it's, what is it, scheduled for 22? 22? 22? Is it? Is that yeah. it's, really? it's not 22, it's like 23 or 24. Yeah, I think it's 23. It's 23. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I thought it was supposed to be last year, but it's... Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. That's what they're talking, we've got postponed now, because we just had that meeting here. Oh, three oh. weeks ago, four weeks ago? On that note, did some additional vegetation get cut down so we can improve? Tony's bit. Tony's blown that. It, that helped? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've been just going over. We've been running a couple extra swaths down the ditch. Because it is, boy, when that grass gets tall, it's. It's hard to say, yeah. That's a tough, yeah. that's a tough turn. All right. All right. Nothing else. I know we got to move into exec. Motion. Executive session for personnel. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all for coming.